Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your host, Nicole and Hannah. Come join us for some hopeful conversations about heartfelt entertainment that makes your heart swing. Hey hearties, we are back for another episode and today we will be recapping season nine, episodes seven and eight, Hope Valley Days, part one and two. First off, episode seven, Hope Valley Days, part one. In this episode, Mayor Hickam decides that Hope Valley needs to get back to its hopeful, joyous roots and decides to host Hope Valley Days, a collective celebration inspired by giving fun, hope, and love. I think that's a great synopsis for the start of this new festival in town. Yeah, definitely. It's very intriguing. I especially like how it says the Hope Valley Days is inspired by giving fun, yeah. hope, and I think that's a great way to describe what Hope Valley Days is. Yes. The episode starts off with the town council meeting. Can we just talk about that for a second? (laughs) Uh, Classic Rosemary. Yes, she comes in right on cue. Oh, yes. You know, Mike says that he thought it would be appropriate to mark the meeting with a photograph of Mm -hmm. the town council which consists of Elizabeth, Henry, Ned, Bill, Lee, Fiona, who isn't there because she's still in San Francisco. And that is all for the moment. Carson, but he has left for Baltimore. So he's not a part of it anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, we definitely miss Carson. That's for sure. Yeah, I love when Rosemary walks over to Lee and starts asking him about the camera. And she calls it a contraption. <laughs> Typical Rosemary. She's so dramatic. Everything she yes. does is be over the top. I love it. Yeah. And then her, I mean, I'll give her that. I'll give her that. She's not. She's yeah. Not and then her line when she's like, I'm ready to shoot. I love it. And then she starts singing. Yes. And I Lee's like, please no. like, sweetheart stop okay. and you know stop. bill's over there tapping lee on the shoulder like what right, is she like, doing make this stop make it stop i can't i can't deal with this oh. I, also, love when pascal, I love when pascal sings she's she's just perfect in that role love it yeah also before they take the picture you know they all have serious looks on their faces and she says oh good gracious this looks like a meeting of the gloomy gus club not the Hope Valley Town Council. <laughs> oh, man. And then say prunes. Prunes. I know. I, I think it's so funny. Like, I guess they said prunes back then versus cheese. Like, I don't know what the origin of that I don't is. Know. I find it really humorous. I like, do, too. I mean, if you think about it, say cheese is kind of a humorous thing, too. But prunes? Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard that before this episode. Me neither. It's very interesting. We have the scene after that with everyone meeting in town. Mike is giving a speech to the residents and he thanks Nathan for handling the traffic situation. Uh I love how as Mike continues to speak, Lee says, oh, I can't bear to listen to this. And he just starts walking. And then Rosemary's like, no, sweetheart, you got to stay and listen. Yes. You'll be fine. It'll be good. Yeah. She's like, oh, Lee, you know, she's like pulling him back in. And then she says, you haven't liked anything he's done in, as mayor. He hasn't done anything as mayor. Oh, oh Lee. Lee, this season, you, you know, I mean, he's going through some stuff because oh. he still, he still hasn't got over this thing with Hickam which is really unfortunate I mean later on we see that it's resolved but at this point in the episode we see that you know he's still struggling with it and it's really unfortunate because you know him and Hickam were were friends they were colleagues and friends and so you know it's it's that's a tough situation to be in for sure but I like how Rosemary's just like reeling him in like no Lee like come on come on give him the town holidays that will be celebrated for the festival Thanksgiving with Elizabeth Hanukkah with Ned and Florence, Valentine's Day with May, Halloween with Lee and Rosemary, and April Fools with Bill. Question, 
Which one would you pick? Out of the all the ones that were chosen, I would definitely pick Thanksgiving. I think there's something so special about giving thanks. And we'll talk about it a little bit later when we talk about the Thanksgiving yeah. portion. But um, yeah, I would definitely pick Thanksgiving. How about yeah. you? Thanksgiving as well. Although it would be fun to dress up for Halloween with Lee and Rosemary. They definitely make it interesting. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about them, including May in the whole town council thing? Because, you know, she's brand new, which at first I was kind of like, okay, like that's a little bit interesting. But after I thought about it, I think they're just there because she's a new person in town. I think they're just trying, you know, make her feel welcome and allowing her to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And I love May. I'm glad she's now a part of Hope Valley. So, I mean, at first I didn't understand since she is a new character, Mm -hmm. but I can see where you thought, you know, they might just want to include her. Yeah, and also like May kind of brought in a little bit of her own culture into it as well for the Valentine's Day celebration. So I'm wondering too, if they like knew that, you know, she was interested in doing that. So maybe they wanted to bring that up as well. Yeah, that's a good possibility. Mm -hmm. I agree. Also, I got to laugh at Nathan and Bill's line when April Fool's is mentioned as a holiday they'll be celebrating for the festival. Nathan says, April Fool's? What is that, a joke? Bill says, let him go. He's on a roll. (laughs) (laughs) He's definitely on a roll. Um, Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was was pretty hilarious. Typical Bill fashion. You know, just the way he delivered that line. Jack Wagner, it's brilliant. Yeah, I agree. And him and Kevin play off so well with each other. So that was great. Yes, they do. Elizabeth at the school with her students teaching a lesson on Thanksgiving. I loved this scene. I thought it was a great interaction between Elizabeth and her students. Right, yeah. It's really nice to see more of that this season because we definitely were missing that last season for sure. Like definitely missing the interaction that Elizabeth had with her students and her lessons. So I love how they brought that into the show or brought that back this season. And I love how, you know, the lessons that she's teaching, you know, her students are also things that we could apply in our own life as well. Yeah. So I love that. I love when Elizabeth is asking what Thanksgiving means to them. And Cooper says, it means no school. And Elizabeth's like, Cooper can be. <laughs> so typical. So typical. And then Timmy's like, that was my answer too. Boys will be boys. Oh. I also got to mention Emily and Angela and Opal and Allie's line. First, Emily says, cooking with my mother. So we get a little mention of Kat without actually saying her name, which I loved. Yeah. That's right. Angela, she says, wonderful smells. Opal, turkey and snoring. Elizabeth says, a snoring turkey? Opal, after we eat, my father always falls asleep in his big chair. (laughs) That was funny. Yeah. And then lastly, Allie says, this may sound silly, but having been away for so long in Rock Creek, it means being together. That's not silly at all. Yeah. I, don't know why I thought that was sweet. Silly. It was very sweet. Love that. I also love how the cowbell is still present. It is. It's still there. She's still using it. Yeah. Just, just good. Yeah. We get a scene with Lee and Rosemary in their office. Lee is dressed as Mark Antony and Rosemary as Cleopatra. What did you think of those costumes? Those were amazing costumes. I mean, Barbara did it again. She definitely went all out with those costumes. I mean, I'm like, girl, like back in that day, where in the world would they find those costumes? Like Rosemary's just, you know, she's just got it all when it comes to acting and, you know, dressing up and like everything. Um, Yeah. yeah. Rosemary quoting Cleopatra when she says, we will not be triumphed over. And Lee says, I came, I saw, I conquered. Rosemary. Well, that was Caesar. Get the girl a stage. Okay, oh I, know we, I know we've moved on from this, but at the same time, I'm like, it's moments like these where, you know, Rosemary needs an outlet for this. I mean, I think, like, honestly, I think this whole 
you know, Halloween thing that they're doing is really just for Rosemary because Rosemary, you know, needs to get that out of her because, you know, yeah. it's still there. she's still very much an actress. Yeah. But like, okay, she she needs to do something. They need to do like maybe they need to, you know, bring the plays back that they used to do, you know, yeah. so they need to bring, you know, they need to bring the Founders Day back play. I love that. Like yeah. That. Yeah, because, you know, Rosemary needs an outlet for this. You could tell she's just really getting into it. Yeah. And if you remember, Rosemary was not present at the time of the very first Founders Day play in season one. She had not arrived in Hope Valley yet. You're right. So she missed out. That is one of my favorite episodes, probably from the series. Yeah, that was a that was a special one for sure. Yeah. Rosemary got a letter from a man who works for William Randolph Hearst. And she says, is it at all possible that the William Randolph Hearst wants to add our little newspaper to his mighty empire? Well, that's how life works, though, isn't it? Great things have small beginnings. And then Lee starts trying to eat the Halloween candy and she swats his hand away. <laughs> that's a typical man right there for you and a wife. Uh, Say no stars here. Not going to happen. Uh, oh, my goodness. Rosemary tells Lee that he should write something nice about Mike. Rosemary also thinks Mike trying to bring everyone together is a wonderful and admirable aspiration. I love her line when she says, why not show that part of yourself? Lee says, well, I'm already showing my legs, maybe. (laughs) That line. (gasps) Oh my, scandalous. (laughs) Scandalous. First we have Fiona's ankles. Now we have Lee's knees. <laughs> oh my goodness. Faith and May at the soda fountain. Faith comes in because she needs an opinion on something and a scoop of honey vanilla ice cream. But Robert is delivering the mail. So May helps her out, of course. And Faith sees the decorations for Valentine's Day at the soda fountain and... One of the decorations is a banner, I believe, that says Chi Si, which is the Chinese celebration of love rooted in romantic folklore. May goes on to say, although I am trying to remind people there are many kinds of fondness and affection and that expressing love doesn't only have to be romantic. It's true. I mean, it is. It's definitely true. And I think I think that's important, too, especially, you know, for the people who, you know, are single. And to hear this Valentine's Day can be a very hard thing. I mean, as someone who's single myself, I mean, I totally understand. I think it's good to hear that, you know, to see that, yeah, it is true. You don't just have to celebrate, you know, romantic love. You can celebrate, you know, friend love, family love, you know, just love in general. I think, I think that's a really important lesson or really important thing that she said there. So I really appreciated that. Yeah. Before I get into my next question. One of the next parts of the scene, Faith goes on to mention how she wants to purchase an x-ray machine for the infirmary, but since she got rid of the infirmary sign, she is now in private practice and doesn't qualify. They see Nathan riding by and Faith says, nothing wrong in celebrating love, May, romantic or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what are your thoughts on Faith and May's friendship? I think it's really sweet. I, yeah, it is a sweet friendship, especially considering, you know, how it was between the one May first came into town. I mean, I do yeah. kind of find it a little bit interesting that she went from, you know, being very cautious of May to all of a sudden being pretty close friends with her. It yeah. seems like I don't really know, like, kind of what happened there because we know May didn't really tell Faith what was going on. She mm-hmm. didn't tell the whole story. Yeah. But somewhere in the midst of all that they they became friends and they grew kind of to trust one another so I think it's interesting but I I definitely like the fact that they're all friends now but I definitely would have liked to see that moment where they just you know realized that okay like or Faith realized that she could trust me you know yeah Minnie and Joseph walking through town and they're talking about the cafe Bill spoke with Abigail who agreed and Unless Bill wants to buy her out, she's ready to sell to the Canfields. Bill is interested in being partners with them, but they still need to get a loan from the bank in Buxton. I love the last few lines in this scene. Joseph says, I know how much you want to be in business for yourself. 
Minnie says, have faith. And Joseph says, oh, I do. And God, it's the folks at the bank that I worry about. Mm. Foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely like how, how they were talking about having faith in God and how like that's an yeah. important thing especially in moments of uncertainty and when we're not sure where something's going to lead. I definitely yeah. agree that they're continuing to keep God at the center of that. I definitely love that. But I definitely also understand it's very human to also, you know, have that doubt because, you know, people are imperfect and especially like the bank in this situation is not healthy at all. They're definitely no. not being fair in this situation. So. Yeah. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. What are your thoughts on, Abigail wanting to sell her share of the cafe to the Canfields. I have mixed feelings about it. It's definitely bittersweet because on one hand, yeah. I, I love the fact that, you know, the Canfields are going to, you know, buy into the cafe, that it's going to be kind of become their place. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time that, you know, somebody was there to take it over. And I think Minnie definitely, you know, needs that outlet. She's, she's been yeah. very good and she needs that purpose. Um, it gives her purpose. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I definitely love that. But to hear that, you know, Abigail's selling her cafe, like that's pretty permanent. Like she's not coming back, which is very unfortunate because we definitely yeah. miss her a lot. But I think to just hear that, you know, she's willing to sell it to the Canfields is also yeah a good thing. I think, it, you know, it's a new start. And I think it's definitely good to hear the mention Abigail, you know, gave her a blessing. And she, she trusts that Bill knows what he's doing and that he trusts the Canfield. So from that respect, I do. I do like that this is where it's going. But at the same time, it's definitely bittersweet because I, I definitely miss Abigail. Yeah, I do too. And I hope they don't change the name. I hope not either. It needs to be Abigail's Cafe still. But Yeah. The next thing I have in my notes, it's a showdown in Hope Valley. Jeffrey arrives and barges into Bill's office. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bill says try going back out and knocking <laughs> then Jeffrey says I'm not looking for trouble but I've come a long way and I'm out of patience yeah right I you was like looking for trouble I was like uh-huh right and you, you your patience is beyond right yeah you have none <laughs> yeah and Bill says you want to be thrown out I love how Bill like just automatically knows that he's bad news. And I think because, you know, Bill is working with May and May has shared a little bit, Bill probably knows. Also, after Jeffrey says that he wants May arrested, Bill tells him that he's close to that himself. And then, you know, we don't see it, but they get into a little argument. I would have loved to see that. I was like, okay, you were, the writers went there. You know, Bill is like full on like trying to get jeffrey to leave town yeah like, he's not having it at all yeah and i was like okay i was like wow okay bill's going there we're doing this yeah i yeah. wanted to see what happened i was a little confused when he came out you know the oh next yeah day. i was a little bit confused about what happened but before the fight started or the little disagreement bill says come back when you can behave in a civilized manner and we right. think that jeffrey is going to walk out and then come back in Mm -hmm. right but no he just yeah. slams the door, slams door. Yeah. and bill's like now that's a mistake yeah oh yeah that was the moment where i was like okay this is going down and it's gonna be ugly <laughs> yeah that's the next thing i wrote in my notes i wrote in all caps showdown in her yes. belly yep yep and then the next thing we know bill is putting him in a wheelbarrow I know I was like okay what just happened why didn't we get to see this Mike seeing it that was hilarious that was funny but I think like Mike was all of us because we were all like wait what just happened <laughs> like how in the world do we go from you know Jeffrey slamming that door and Bill saying this isn't that's a mistake to him putting Jeffrey in a wheelbarrow like what happened yeah the next scene I have to admit was a really great conversation between Lucas and Elizabeth. It's one of those deep conversations that, you know, we haven't gotten a lot of between these two. Right. He goes to the school to offer to walk her home. And she asks how the attorney meeting went for the sale of the oil business, which, you know, he states that 
The second opinion was the same as the first. Lucas admires Elizabeth's passion for teaching. I think Elizabeth asks him something along the lines of, you know, what did he want to be doing or where did he want to be when he was younger and traveling through Europe with his parents? He says that he wanted to live in one town in one home where his family could get to know everyone and everyone could get to know them. After that, he says, I wanted to be here with you. Elizabeth says, well, then that makes us both very lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely nice to see them have that moment of just, you know, I guess maybe being a little bit vulnerable because, you know, we haven't seen a lot of, you know, deep conversations between the two of them. Not that this one was deep, but I definitely think, you know, it definitely went beyond the surface because Lucas, you know, was showing, you know, kind of the stuff that he went through growing up because, you know, mm-hmm. we were aware that, you know, he he traveled a lot and he never really yeah. had a place to call, you know, like one place to call home. And so the fact that, you know, they're having this conversation and Lucas is opening up about that, you could just see and understand a little bit more about why he is the way that he is. And I mean... I definitely feel like they should have had this conversation sooner, but it was really nice to see, you know, that moment of them just, you know, opening up to each other. Yeah. Lucas and Henry have a conversation in the saloon. Henry spoke to Fiona and things didn't go how they planned in San Francisco with the meeting. Basically like Lucas mentioned in the last scene. Right. There's a lot of that going on. Mm Mm-hmm. Henry says that he and Fiona will ask the investors if they'll close on the deal without him being involved in the company. And I believe Lucas's line after that is something along the lines of having Fiona acting as a manager with no experience. E. Oh Oh boy. I love Fiona, but E. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if, okay. I love Fiona too, but I don't know if she's quite at that point where she's ready to, you know, have this much responsibility it's happened very quickly and I and I think from what we've seen so far you know she's she doesn't know as much as she should in this Mm -hmm. situation and so I I definitely see some more issues coming up with that yeah Lucas even tells Henry that they won't go for that Henry says I need you to trust me on this Lucas says, I do trust you, Henry. I have been. I just hope you haven't overplayed our hand. And Henry is going to go to San Francisco where Fiona is to, I guess, meet with who they need to. Yeah. I think that's smart. Fiona, Fiona, she shouldn't be doing it alone. Yeah. Nathan and Bill in the Mountie office. There are no arrest warrants for Jeffrey Lewis, but there are three for May Sue. Oh, yikes. Bill couldn't legally say anything to Nathan because of being her attorney. Jeffrey's line, when Nathan starts walking out, he says, Constable, where are you going? That man hit me. And Bill says, not hard enough. <laughs> oh, my. I definitely felt for Nathan in this scene. Like, yeah. he just felt so in the dark. I mean, this is one of his closest friends. I mean, him and Bill, you know, have done so much together. Yeah. And I mean, and you know, him and May have been getting closer. And I think to just, you know, find out about this whole situation, mm-hmm. he had no idea. Mm. I mean, I would feel the same way he, he was. I would be like, why didn't you tell me? Like, yeah. come on, what's going on? I mean, he is a Mountie, so he should at least, you know, I feel like, I feel like, in this situation, they could bend the law just a little bit just because yeah. you know, Nathan is a law, too. Nathan is the law. So I definitely feel like Bill could have said something to Nathan without actually saying Saying something. it. Yeah. yeah. May's charges are larceny, forgery, and spousal abandonment, all made in Chicago. No. Mm-mm. That sounds uh-uh. very fishy. Uh-uh. No way. Nope. No, I cannot see May doing that. We get to see Anna back, which I loved. Elizabeth goes in the cafe because she needs flour for blueberry muffins, I believe, for little Jack. And, you know, Anna comes up to the counter and they talk for a second and she seems upset about something. What is going on with Anna? I don't know, but we'll find out. Yes. What did you think? was going on with her 
I'd love to know your thoughts like before we actually find out what it was yeah you know I wasn't quite sure I mean I could definitely I could definitely tell that you know she was struggling with something and something was making her very upset I mean obviously but I could definitely tell that like you know she was you know trying to work through something and it just wasn't wasn't happening the way she wanted I could tell she really wanted to talk about it and I think it was just the fact that you know she didn't feel like she could at that moment I definitely felt that like she really wanted to tell Elizabeth what was going on but she was like I'm not going to so I'm just going to avoid you yeah for a little bit I thought that it might have something to do with her like getting married early and maybe having a child yeah I mean I could see that too I mean yeah I guess now that I think back I it definitely seemed like she was a little I mean it crossed my mind but I definitely I I okay now now I remember my initial reaction was she seems upset at Elizabeth yeah like something's going on here and like I she wanted to talk to Elizabeth about it but she couldn't yeah I wasn't sure like what it was though yeah I didn't know Minnie walks up you know, sort of in the middle of their conversation and Anna walks away and Minnie and Elizabeth start having a little conversation. Minnie asks Elizabeth if she can keep a secret. And of course it's about the cafe. Elizabeth mentions to her that Abigail called and told her that was the plan, which I loved hearing. I know. I love hearing that they still talk to each other. Yes. I love the next scene when Gustav is right outside the pharmacy and soda fountain playing the accordion and Ned and Florence walk up and Florence says this is lovely (laughs) I know I love that Gustav is so funny I feel like you know he does not get the recognition he deserves I love Gustav he's hilarious and him playing the accordion was fantastic yes and they hired him yeah good taste yes very good taste good music taste she knows what's up and speaking of may ned and florence ask her to consider staying in hope valley as their pharmacist which i loved yeah i loved it especially since you know when she first came you know they were like faith they were a little bit weary of her and and now now that i think now she's been there a little bit they realize that you know she is trustworthy and she's really good at her job so they feel comfortable hiring her which i thought was really sweet and i think it was probably a big confidence booster for May as well to see that they trust her and that they would like her to stay on. Yeah, that look between May and Nathan. Ouch. Ooh. That was that was very well played. Kevin did an amazing job with that. That look that he gave her was very believable. And I definitely felt for May. I was mm. like, oh, oh boy. Oh. That was cold. <laughs> That was ice cold. Oh, yeah. Faith and Mike have a conversation in town. She asks him if he and the town council would reconsider the purchase of an x-ray machine. Mike wants to know if it's for the infirmary or her private practice. Faith says the town will benefit in investing in her. Mike doesn't doubt it, but tells her that the same could be said for just about every business in town. I love how after that, Mike goes on to tell Faith about all the jobs that he's had in Hope Valley. He started in Hope Valley working at the Mercantile as an assistant shopkeeper, sweeping up, stocking shelves, closing at night. Then he moved on to a job at Lee's Sawmill, where Rosemary called him Lumberjack. After that, he worked and eventually ran Gowan Petroleum. He thought his life couldn't possibly get any better, and now he's the mayor. I love that he, you know, went through a list of all the different things that he's done because, you know, yeah. I kind of forgot, honestly, that, you know, he was, he worked in Ned's shop. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. And so like, it was good to see that, like the history of Hickam and how you, much he's grown and changed. And I, I think it's really good too, especially since, you know, his character is getting a lot more screen time this season, like way more than ever. 
And so mm-hmm. I like to see that, you know, they're, they're showing us, you know, how much history he has. And I, I love that, you know, he's kind of like embracing that. And of course he had to, he just had to say, you know, that Rosemary used to call him a lumberjack. <laughs> like that's so funny. And that just make, reminds me uh, back in those yeah. early seasons when, you know, I think Hickam had a little bit of a crush on Rosemary. Crush on Rosemary. Really yeah. on. So I think that, I think that's really funny and humorous that he, he mentioned that because that was from that time. So yeah. I thought that was funny, but, um, but yeah, I love to see, you know, to see you know the growth that Hickam has gone through and I think that's just like such a good thing for us to remember as well that just because maybe we're not where we want to be right now but you know these these steps that we take are you know helping us you know to get to you know the final destination of where you know maybe where we want to be so I love that and to see that you know he's trying to encourage Faith you know to not just stay where she's at but to keep growing and to keep moving I really like that I do too yeah Mike says as much as he wants to, he can't offer Faith any special treatment, but he knows she can grow her practice on her own. The town will still benefit and so will she even more so because of investing in herself as well as her business. Mm -hmm. I think Faith needed to hear that. Yeah, I thought that encouragement was really sweet. We see Lee and Rosemary in their office again. Lee says, you think Michael likes being mayor? Rosemary. No, not yet, at least. It goes against his sweet and generous nature. Oh, mm-hmm. that's sweet. Yeah. I love Rosemary's line when she says, heavy is the head that wears the crown you see. And then Lee mentioning how the crown could be poison ivy. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, Lee. <laughs> that crown is not poison ivy. It looks like, I don't even know what it looks like. It just looks like a regular crown made of leaves. Right. I think Lee's just not having it. He's just yeah. like, okay, let's get this over with. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth stops by for a visit because she wants Rosemary and Lee to run an announcement for the Thanksgiving dinner in the next edition of the Valley Voice. I love how when Elizabeth first gets there, Lee says, I think I'm going to go to the soda fountain and cry over an egg cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh when lee leaves elizabeth compliments rosemary on her costume i love rosemary's response i can't remember how she said it but she was like thank you yep she extended her hands and yep she did in classic rosemary fashion oh yes rosemary commenting on how she and lee could play dress up for months with the trunks with all the old costumes. I would like to know how many costumes are in those two trunks. Mm-hmm. It has to be a lot if it can cover months. Yeah. I mean, I was also going to say that when she said that we could do this for months, I was going to say, speak for yourself there, Missy. I'm sure your husband would have a different story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lee's such a good husband. He's just going yeah. along. You yeah. Know? But I don't think there's anybody else in town who could put up with that. Yeah. So, you know, we got to give it to Leaf, you know, for doing it. Yeah. One of the funniest lines in this scene after Elizabeth asks about the announcement that she wants run in the Valley Voice, Rosemary says, Let it be done. And then Elizabeth starts clapping. <laughs> clapping. Oh my goodness. She's I love t- their friendship. Me too. Nathan and May's conversation with Bill in his office. The first line we hear is from Bill and he says, your husband is rather annoying. May says, you know, he's not my husband. I have to agree with Bill. He is quite annoying and arrogant. Oh yeah. Big time. Nathan figures out that it really was May who rode into town dressed as a man. May says a woman is safer traveling that way. And then Nathan leaves. That look he gave. Ice cold. Yeah, and he he just also looks so defeated in that moment. Like, I just saw him. He's just like, I'm just like, he's just, he's just, you know, he's just struggling. He's struggling. He's struggling with, you know, hurt that he's feeling, you know, from all the, from these different women who, you know, he thinks he knows. And then he just, he finds out all this stuff about them. And he's just like, I mean, what do I do with that? I mean, he's just, I feel for him. Yeah, I do too. After Nathan leaves, Bill looks at May and he says, you blame him? And May says, 
he doesn't know what happened and unfortunately neither do you since I never told you the whole story. Bill says that he will take some blame for not running a record check on May when she first came to his office. I love how she apologizes to him. She says, you trusted me and I'm sorry I broke that trust. Bill says that she can make it up to him and maybe even help herself by speaking to Jeffrey so that they can clear things up. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, May's definitely going here and learning some stuff here too. Like, I don't think she realized, you know, the importance of, you know, being transparent in this situation. Cause I think, you know, she was, you know, I think she was trying to protect herself. I mean, this is an uncomfortable situation for her and, you know, it's not really anyone else's business what's going on, but at the same time, it's like, I think she's realizing that, you know, these are people who, you know, need to trust her. And mm-hmm. she needs to trust them too with this information. So I think she, the fact that, you know, she's able to, you know, admit her faults and to be able to apologize for not being, you know, exactly truthful about this information. I think that definitely shows the depth of her character, the fact that she has a good heart. Yeah. Bill in the infirmary with Faith and Molly. Faith is sending Bill to Union City for a chest x-ray. Bill says, April Fools, no thank you. And Faith says, no, no kidding. He's got wheezing and shortness of breath, which they mentioned could be a sign of pneumonia. Mm, oh boy. I mean, I've def- I could definitely tell that Bill has been struggling with stuff this season. And I think when I saw that scene, I was like, okay, it makes so much sense now, this mood that he's been in all season long. Because yeah. like I said in other recaps, He's been very extra this season. And I think the fact that, you know, now we're kind of seeing what, that there's stuff going on with him, with his health. I think it kind of makes sense. I mean, it's got to all be connected in some way. Yeah. I love how Molly was concerned about him and she says, please for me. Yeah, me too. I, I love their friendship. And I think, I mean, I said this about what went on between them last season too. I mean, I personally still would have liked to see them, you know, get together. I think they would be really cute. But even if, you know, that doesn't happen, because at this point, it doesn't look like it will. But I love the fact that they're still continuing to show this bond of friendship that these two have yeah. between each other. And the fact that Molly's able to get Bill to do stuff that he wouldn't do for anyone else. Yeah. Shows the fact that, you know, Bill really does think highly of her and he, he yeah. cares about what he means. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. Elizabeth in the library seeing the sign. Oh boy. (laughs) I think all of Team Nathan were at least just a tad bit triggered by this scene. A little bit. Okay, from one respect, I will say the first time I watched it, I was not having it with this scene. I was like, okay, no. But the second time I watched it, I watched it with with a group of people and somebody mentioned to me, they said, that, you know, I think it just shows that Elizabeth, you know, is remembering that Nathan is her friend and how much, yeah. you know, Nathan actually means to her. And I think that's a good perspective because mm-hmm. I think that Nathan, we all wanted, you know, that sign to be something that would have helped them last season. But the fact that, you know, it wasn't really brought up last season at all and it was brought up this season, you know, after Elizabeth is with Lucas, I think, you know, it was definitely hard to see. But I think if you look at that, the scene yeah. and see, how, you know, Elizabeth is really, you know, looking at that message on the plaque about doing what you're afraid to do. And she smiles. I think it's a good reminder to just see, you know, what, like of the importance of that and how, like, you know. Nathan is still having a positive influence on her life and to see that, you know, she's able to look at and smile and say, you know what, I I really do care about Nathan, even though despite sometimes how team Nathan, it's hard to see that she does care about him, but he does. And so I, I definitely appreciated that perspective to just see, to take, you know, those initial thoughts that I had of that scene and then to see, okay, well, you know, this is a positive thing. It's good that she's looking at that, even though, it's still hard it's still hard yeah the next scene it jumps around just a little bit like we get a few scenes in between part of this particular moment with Elizabeth and Nathan but she comes out of the library and runs into Nathan and he says how about that driving lesson now Elizabeth says now and Nathan says well better than later and then 
Elizabeth wants to know why there's a sudden urgency about the driving lesson. He tells her that with everything going on, he just can't put it off any longer. He sees the book she has in her basket, Sedimentary Rocks and Minerals. You know, I picked out the Magic of Oz, but for whatever reason, Jack likes it when we read about rocks. <laughs> That's cute. I love it that, you know, Jack wants to read about rocks. Yeah. So cute. I love it. The driving lesson. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Oh my. <laughs> I actually loved this scene, except for that last line yeah. from Nathan. I know. Yeah. Okay. Let's just talk about, you know, the driving lesson itself. That was hilarious. I was definitely, I was definitely feeling for Nathan there. I was like, okay, Elizabeth, this is a little annoying. Like, like you, can, do you have to be such a teacher right now? Like, can you just, you know, chill a little bit? Nathan, what's this button do? <laughs> Nathan's just not having it. And I mean, I feel like that's such a guy thing too to be like you know like the woman wants to be all you know serious about in the situation and then the guy's just like nope let's just be silly let's just have fun you know and I think I mean it also goes to show which we'll see later too that Nathan really doesn't want to drive mm -mm. He, he's a distraction I loved his facial expression when he pushed the button for the horn that was priceless that was all Kevin all Kevin <laughs> totally Kevin right there and I love it yes so good I just have to mention and give props to Aaron for nailing an impression of Garwin Sanford as her father because I could see it just that way just I could see him teaching her how to drive the exact same way she was trying to teach Nathan how to drive yeah yeah definitely I love her line when she is impersonating her father and she says as I was saying Take the time to check your vehicle and the surroundings. Are your tires fully inflated? Is there anything or anyone blocking your path? And Nathan says, when do we start going? When do we drive? Good question, Nathan. I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> also, you know, her other line when she is impersonating her father, she says, upon entering the vehicle, make sure you're comfortable. Orient yourself with your controls reflight steering wheel etc cetera, etc cetera. and I love in the midst of that as she's talking Nathan just opens like, the door and gets just out, like out. I, I'm done I'm not listening to this anymore nope uh, Nathan says thank you for understanding and Elizabeth says of course then we get the line that probably all of teen Nathan just cringes at yeah maybe it was a good thing that you and I never got together maybe ouch yeah yeah that was cold I mean, okay i will i will i will give it to him though like yeah. i said i think with the sign the first time i saw that yeah. scene it hurt i was like okay yeah. i see what the writers are trying to do here yeah and it i feel like this is just making it worse but on the second rewatch and i rewatched it with a different perspective i was like okay you know what well in this situation yeah it's a good thing they didn't get together because yeah they are not they are not they're, they're not clicking right now. they're not in concert yeah <laughs> typical yeah. for this well fitting for this situation yeah yeah they're they're definitely not clicking here and I think you know I think it's good and especially since you know Nathan does need to move on I think it's good that he's realizing that it's just I think the fact that he said that I was like who like who are you Nathan what have you done with that old shy Nathan that I love so much? I was like, who are you right now? Yeah. I think that was my biggest issue with the thing is like, I feel like, you know, the Nathan I know would never say something like that. But yeah. at the same time, that's not the first time he said something that really surprised me this season. So yeah. I, I will admit this episode, I was a little bit like, okay, like this is not the Nathan I knew and loved. But at the same time, I do think the fact that he's realizing you know where things are right now and he's realized yeah. you know maybe he's having a lot of realizations that okay mm -hmm. like, wasn't meant to be and that's okay and I think yeah um, in some situations like that the only the only way to handle it is with humor yeah he's trying mm -hmm. to be funny yeah so, I get it but but yeah. yeah at the same time ouch yeah. yeah who are you and what have you done with Nathan Gray <laughs> right exactly exactly this next scene is one of my favorites in the episode when Joseph and Minnie are 
at Abigail's Cafe praying, and they're praying about buying into the cafe. Joseph says, and if it be your will for us to buy into this cafe, then we'll do our best to honor you here, Lord. Amen. I love that. If it be your will. And I think, you know, that is an extremely important lesson. I mean, that should always be our prayer is if, if it's the Lord's will, it'll happen. If it's not, then it's not meant to be. It's not his will. And so I love, I absolutely love that. Love it. Yeah. Joseph goes on to say, Many, you and I come from two very different families. Not that yours didn't work just as hard as mine, but back in St. Louis, your folks were well-respected and we've seen it. Not here in Hope Valley, but in other places that people don't, many. I know what you're saying and everything will be fine. Joseph says, all right, let's get to Buxton. We don't want that bank to close on us. I also like this scene too, because we learned a little bit more about, you know, their backgrounds. Not a whole lot, but I, I like that they were, you know, talking about that and how, you know, they kind of had different backgrounds. So I, yeah. I that was a, that was a nice little scene. What did you think about Allie's talk with May in Bill's office? I liked the scene. I thought it was a great moment between them. Yeah, I thought it was definitely a sweet moment. I mean, I'm kind of, I was kind of curious why Allie was going into Bill's office. I, I mean, think she was looking for Nathan. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, must have, you know not been in the jail and maybe she thought he would be in there so yeah, yeah. That, that does make sense but I definitely like too that like once again like the timing was mm-hmm. just perfect because Allie and May both needed that encouragement in that moment and the fact that you know Allie felt close enough to May felt like she could trust May enough to be able to tell her that I think I think that was really nice and I think the fact that you know May had a realization while she was, you know, trying to encourage Allie. And I think that happens a lot of times in life too. Sometimes, you know, we're trying to be a blessing to someone else. And through that blessing, we're also able to, you know, help ourselves as well. So I definitely, I like that scene. It was a sweet scene. No words for this next scene. Henry standing outside the mine. Wow. Ooh, that camera work was powerful. Wow. And Martin... Yes, props to Martin for that. Well done. Yeah, Yeah. I know it was so it was so good. And I I definitely got flashbacks there. I mean, I actually made a reel about it today. Just like, you know, Martin or Gowan standing there in that mine. I could just picture him thinking back, you know, to the involvement that he had in that Mm -hmm. mine disaster and the widows and just everything. And um, yeah, like just that's such like a powerful a powerful moment he is one of the best actors on hallmark i mean he doesn't even have to say a word just his <laughs> facial expressions just i know yeah no words yeah stellar performance for sure from martin cummins can we just talk about lucas and robert's conversation in the soul oh my goodness i was not expecting that at all the fact that Robert made sure Lucas was his last stop for delivering mail is so funny. I mean, Lucas? <laughs> Robert's like, when did you first, you know, go together? Robert, don't you have to finish the rest of your deliveries? No, I made sure you were my last stop. Oh, what I mean is, when did you and Mrs. Thornton first begin courting? Well, Mrs. Thornton and I have known each other a little over three years, but I wouldn't say we started courting until just recently. I see. Do you think it'll feel like a long time for me before I court? I think the time will fly right by. Thanks, Mr. Bouchard. Oh my goodness. Lucas was not prepared for that at all. And I could tell he was just like, how do I get out of this situation? I do not. I don't want to be having this conversation right now. (laughs) <laughs> with Robert like yeah yeah no that, that, that was an interesting scene I definitely I, I I liked it though that you know Lucas put it out there that no like him and Elizabeth haven't been courting that long like they just yeah. started I think there's a lot of fans who kind of thought you know they kind of started courting you know back you know a few seasons ago but you know it really did yeah. it really did just yeah. begin last season yeah. so I definitely I definitely appreciated that fact that you know Lucas affirmed that that you know they weren't a thing before last season. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I like that for sure. And I think, um, you know, for, for what Lucas 
had to deal with, you know, trying to help Robert in that situation. I think he did a good job of just reaffirming him, you know, it'll fly right by. You, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. May's conversation with Bill in the jail. Bill talked to the police in Chicago, specifically the deputy chief. He sent a man over to the clerk of courts. They found a marriage license with her signature, just the way Jeffrey has been claiming. May says that he's made up everything. Jeffrey tapping on the jail cell bars with his ring finger and saying, what are you talking about? That just like irked me. Oh yeah, I know. I know he is, uh, he's a piece of work. Bill's like, be quiet. Yeah. That scene with May and Jeffrey walking through town. May says, you couldn't possibly. You accuse me of things I didn't do. And now Jeffrey says, I had to find you. You know how I feel about you. You need to come back to Chicago. May says, I don't know how you knew I was here, but I'm not leaving. I made mistakes and I took you for granted. May, please wait. Goodbye, Jeffrey. I was like, you tell him, girl. You tell him. He basically admitted to the whole town that he did what he accused her of doing yeah without actually saying it but yes yeah yeah without actually saying it but i mean bill and nathan or at least one of them heard it because they were both watching the whole yeah. thing yeah oh my goodness ned and florence in the mercantile ned has decided to start celebrating hanukkah again he and his late wife, Irene, used to celebrate it every year with Katie, and she loved it. But after she died, for some reason, he just stopped. I love how Ned thanks Florence for encouraging him. And Florence says, Ned, if something is important to you, it's important to me. That was sweet. Yeah. Ned wants to post flyers for anyone interested, but the only spot he could find to celebrate is the saloon, and he doesn't want anyone to feel like he's being disrespectful. Florence says, people know your heart. I'm sure that people would love to come. That was really nice that Ned didn't want to, you know, offend anyone. Yeah, but, no, that was super sweet. He was being very considerate in that yes. moment. You know, he has the right heart of intentions and he's definitely not trying to be disrespectful at all. So I love yeah. what Florence said about that too, because it's very true. Yeah. This next scene breaks my heart when Joseph goes to Lee and Rosemary's office and he gives the car keys back to them because they borrowed Lee's car. The bank wouldn't give Joseph and Minnie the loan. And at first Lee doesn't understand, but then... Within seconds, you know, he just puts the pieces together. It's heartbreaking. It is, I know. But I definitely love how, like, Lee actually had to think about that because that's not even in his mind. Mm -mm. Like, skin mm -mm. color means nothing to him. Mm -mm. And so I love that, you know, that wasn't even in his mind. But then yeah. when he has that realization, like, oh, it breaks my heart too. Yeah. Lee wants he and Rosemary to cover the Camfields loan, but Rosemary thinks he should talk to Joseph first. Lee says no, because Joseph will never accept the help. Rosemary knows he means well, but it could be the kind of wonderful gesture that could backfire. Lee says he'll make sure the Canfields don't find out. He also says since he's been doing all the work at the paper, Joseph has covered everything for him at the mill and hasn't complained once. Before I get into my question. I just have to commend Lee for what he did. You know, he calls the bank in Buxton and he says, Colby, listen very carefully. They either get the loan without knowing we'll cover it or I'm pulling all my business from your bank. Do you understand me? I've never been more serious. Way to go. Yes, Lee. Yes. So much respect for him for that. Yeah. When, when when he says that do you understand me and he's like no like this is not okay with me I'm gonna pull you know all of my business with you if you don't do this I was like yes Lee yes Dude. yeah yes it was the right thing for Lee to do but at the same time how do you feel about him doing it without telling Joseph I have mixed feelings about it I mean I agree with Rosemary it could backfire yeah, I mean, from that respect, it definitely could backfire. But at the same time, personally, I think, I mean, in that situation, I mean, I might have done the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in situations that's like this, you know, it's very, it hits very close to home for the Canfields. And I feel like, you know, 
nobody you know wants to take charity like that I mean yeah no. but I I really admire Lee for doing what mm-hmm. he did because I feel yeah. like in that situation you know there was no other way that it was going to happen for them and I think the fact mm-hmm. that you know this is his way that he can, you know, repay Joseph back for, you know, all the, all the things that he's done for him. And, you know, like he said, like Joseph hasn't complained and he's been so helpful. And I think this is just one way to just show, you know, Joseph without him actually knowing that, you know, Joseph has done a good thing and that, you know, like they really do matter and that the Canfields like really can, you know, do this. And I think, you know, sometimes, there's that saying like what you don't know won't hurt you and I think in a lot of moments you know sometimes that's that's not always the case and that's not always true but I think in this moment I think it's just something that can that's really reassuring for them especially like as we'll see later is like they're so surprised that they got the loan and they're so happy about it and I think it's just I think they they deserve that and so I think I don't think there's anything wrong with Lee doing what he did I mean I could definitely see that being little bit of foreshadowing though rosemary's yeah. comment like something yeah later on with that mm-hmm. but but i'm with lee on this one i think what he did was the right thing to do yeah that driving lesson that technically did not happen between lucas and nathan it just turned into a conversation with them yeah. i actually i loved that scene in the conversation just because yeah. i think that they are starting to have a good relationship or friendship yeah and I love that they're they're kind of becoming more like brothers which yeah. personally I really like I I've always wanted like you know to see that between them and I think the fact that you know they're helping each other because back in season eight you know the finale Nathan was there for Lucas and he he helped him and I think now it was Lucas's turn to return that gesture you know to help him and so I definitely like that as well how like you know it, it definitely totally was not about the driving at all it was it was all about you know helping okay. yeah yeah and it's interesting how what Nathan said to Lucas in the season eight finale when they were talking in the saloon was the same exact thing almost to what Lucas told Nathan yeah in this episode I mean, different wording but yeah like don't walk away don't walk away because Lucas was about to leave in the season yeah. eight finale yeah definitely I mean totally different situations but you know it's still there and I think that just shows the impact that you know Nathan's words had on Lucas for Lucas to be able to tell Nathan basically the same thing yeah those last few lines when Nathan says Thanks for the driving lesson, Lucas. Lucas says, you know, if you actually ever want to learn how to drive, you just reach out. Nathan's like, appreciate it. (laughs) He's like, yeah, it's not going to (laughs) happen. This conversation is another favorite in the episode and also a tear worthy scene. Elizabeth and Anna's conversation. Anna's mother got a job in Bellingham, so they have to move. Elizabeth tells Anna that Lee and Rosemary's niece, Rachel, lives there. Anna wants to stay in Hope Valley. Elizabeth says, I understand, but moving to new places and meeting new people, it can be one of the best things. And Anna says that she's not afraid. I believe she says one other thing after that. Elizabeth goes on to say, it's been a privilege watching you become this remarkable young woman, and I just know you have a bright future ahead. Anna wants to go off to college someday when she earns enough money. That's why she took the job at the cafe, but she's not ready to leave Hope Valley yet and wants to stay until she is by herself. Anna says, you've inspired me, Mrs. Thornton, and she wants her to help. That's sweet. Yeah. Of course, Elizabeth accepts and says she'll do the best that she can. She's such a good teacher. Mm -hmm. She is. I think everyone needs a teacher like Elizabeth mm-hmm. that really truly cares about their students. Yeah, definitely. The scene when everyone is in the saloon, Ned is talking about Hanukkah and the Festival of Lights. It celebrates the rededication of the ancient temple in Jerusalem when oil to light the lamp, which should have only lasted one night, lasted or eight. I loved seeing Opal light the first candle. That was really sweet. It was sweet to see how, you know, Ned was giving the children an opportunity, you know, to To participate. Participate, yes. I love Ned's line when he says, even a little light shines the brightest when things are darkest. Mm -hmm. That's so true. 
Yeah. So true. Pumpkin ice cream. That just sounds disgusting. I'm sorry. Before. I've had it before. It's actually good. You've had it? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not I've bad. Actually had it. It's actually good. I've never had it. I'll have to try it. Yeah, it's good. If you like pumpkin pie, you'll you'll like pumpkin ice cream. It's just it's just cold and it, it it's a, it's lighter. It's lighter from what I can I'll remember. have to try it. Yeah, it's good. It's not gross. It's good. Yeah. Cuz I do like pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Joseph and Minnie tell Lee and Rosemary they got the loan. Again, I kind of felt bad. I again, I was happy that Lee did what he did, yeah. but yeah. at the same time, I kind of felt bad for Joseph and Minnie yeah and what they're gonna do I know yeah it was a little it was a little bit of an awkward situation I mean see I think there's two sides to this because when we're just talking about you know you know Joseph is gone and Lee and Rosemary having this conversation yes totally on Lee's side but I think when you see them you know in the same situation I definitely felt a little bit awkward just seeing you know Lee and Rosemary you know they're they're pretending you know they're they're like yeah. pretending to be happy for them and like oh like they didn't know what was going on when in fact they were the ones they who did happen and I think I definitely think in that respect I definitely feel like yeah that was a little bit of an awkward situation and if and when they do the Canfields do find out that's going to be a very it's going to be a hard conversation I think yeah Lucas and Elizabeth have a conversation she starts off by saying penny for your thoughts That reminds me of her saying the same exact thing to Jack in the first episode of season four when they're having the picnic date on the boat. Yep, yep. (laughs) Lucas says, I think our relationship is worth a little more than that, but yes, of course. She goes on to say, if fear is a person's only motivation in life, then they won't move forward. They won't accomplish anything. I couldn't be any more thankful that I ventured out on my own from Hamilton all those years ago and became far less fearful about everything. And now I feel as though I can do almost anything, even more so with you. Thank you for always being so supportive. And then Gustav interrupts when they're about to say something. Of course. (laughs) I wouldn't say that this is my favorite scene with them in the season. I thought that it had some good moments, but... Yeah, it was a sweet scene. I mean, if you just think of it, like take it for what it was and not really think about anything behind it or anything, just Mm -hmm. like the dialogue was really good. And I really appreciated that. And I definitely think what Elizabeth said is definitely words to live by. But at the same time, I think I feel like it kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I could see the I could see how it ties back into Elizabeth looking at the plaque. But I want to know why like mm-hmm. why that was on her mind because I feel like you know it wasn't really super clear why yeah. she was thinking that. maybe just the Hope Valley days and like thinking back that could be part of it but I, I was definitely a little bit I was kind um, of a little a little confused why she brought that up at that particular moment here's a thought and I don't know if this is actually the case but you know when Gustav interrupts it looks like Elizabeth is about to say something And we haven't heard them say, well, we haven't heard them say out loud to each other, I love you. And it sounded like that was what Elizabeth was about to say to him. So I wonder if the thing about fear has to do with her being afraid to say those words again. I don't know if that makes sense, but. It makes sense. It's possible. I mean, I I can't personally, I can't really see her saying it in that situation because, you know, they're in the midst of everybody. I feel like it would be yeah. more in like a private setting, but at the same time, it's definitely, it's definitely possible. I feel like, I feel like it could go a lot of different ways. I just yeah. I wasn't really clear where yeah. she was yeah. in that particular situation, but I appreciated the dialogue nonetheless. Yeah. The last scene is the town bonfire. I thought that was beautiful. Just the whole setting and Mm-hmm. Yeah. everyone yeah. crowded around spending time together yeah it was a really it was a really nice moment and I loved the camera work in that scene I think like the lighting and just the way yeah. they shot that scene was really good I yeah loved it. Rosemary says she's enjoying herself Lee admits Michael has done a good job as mayor and that Hope Valley Days was a huge success I love Rosemary's line when she says they're not over yet Lee says Please say no more costumes. 
oh, I won't spoil anything. Just you wait and see what I have planned. Oh boy. Once again, Lee is so over the cock. I don't blame him. I really don't. Yeah. Just realized I think I made a mistake early on in the episode about the infirmary sign being taken down because it is taken down in this scene and she puts it in the fire with Mike by her side. Right. Before she does that, she says to Mike, if I'm going to step out on my own, I have to go all the way. Can't rely on anyone, not even the town. I'm not sure I would have come to this decision if it weren't for your encouragement. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Yeah. Mike thinking the triangle instrument that Ned was playing was the fire alarm was hilarious. He's so clueless sometimes. And that's honestly, I know some people aren't too thrilled Um, with how like stupid he seems this season. Like he just doesn't know anything. He's just so goofy all the time. I'm loving it. Honestly, I think it's comedy gold. He's like, is that the fire alarm? Right. And I think Ben Rosenbaum plays it so well. I love it. Yeah. Elizabeth and Lucas, they have another conversation. I did like this scene between them. She says, there's just enough chill in the air to remind us that autumn is at the door. Lucas says, have you ever considered a fall wedding? Just curious. That's all. Can't say that I have. Have you ever considered a spring wedding? And then Gustav starts playing the accordion. I thought this was a sweet moment between them. Although the thing with time kind of confuses me. Like, what month is it in Hope Valley? I know. I think that's something we're all very curious about. Like, where are they in the scheme of things? Like, I do think they made some sort of a comment about, like, the weather changing and how it being, like, maybe around the... I don't oh? know. Yeah, all of them? That, that that's kind of what I thought from like I can't remember where I heard that but I, I feel like there was a comment that was made and I was like okay so maybe it's almost fall I don't know but yeah that is interesting it is it is definitely curious and I think I think they I think the writers want us to be confused at this point I don't think they want us to know yeah it just makes me wonder because at the end of season eight in the finale one of the last scenes we saw was Cooper ringing the bell for the first day of school Mm -hmm. right and then you know season eight ends and we come back at the beginning of season nine and school has already started and Minnie has been substituting so I'm not sure time is fluid in Hope Valley I don't know the timeline is always off I do not know maybe September because if Elizabeth said that if Elizabeth said that Autumn is at the door. Yes, yes, she did. So it's probably, yeah. September, or October. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Nonetheless, Lucas is fishing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, I, and I have to say the writers, Hope Valley, or When Calls the Heart, I should say, is known for taking its time with things. They are not taking their time at all. They're speeding stuff up. <laughs> Yeah, of course, I mean this in the kindest way possible, but I think they learned their lesson with how long it took for Jack and Elizabeth to get married. Yes, definitely. I think they definitely learned their lesson and also with how long Elizabeth took to make a choice. Mm -hmm. I think they're just, they're ready to move on and to finally be stuff up and make things happen. Yeah, I love the closing monologue or journal entry that we get from Elizabeth. She says... It was a beautiful night, and for the first time in a while, everything that seemed to need our attention, that had occupied all our days, was put to the side, and in their place, instead, were those things that are surely more precious. Simple pleasures, such as hot cocoa, toasted marshmallows, and a roaring bonfire. That night, we realized our town could shine brighter than ever, and for now, Hope Valley Days were still here helping remind us. That's nice dialogue. Yeah. That was a nice way to end the episode, I thought. Yeah. All right, Hardies, on to episode eight, Hope Valley Days, part two. In this episode, residents of Hope Valley continue to enjoy the first ever Hope Valley Days Festival. Though with an unwelcome visitor unexpectedly still in town, everyone is coming together, not just in celebration, but to help one of their own. I love that synopsis for this episode. I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm, Definitely. The episode starts with another journal entry from Elizabeth, 
and a montage of a lot of the Hope Valley residents, which I loved. The journal entry reads, Hope Valley Days, the inspiration of our very own mayor, Mike Hickam. On that first rainy day, he talked with pride as he pointed to each of the four corners of the center of town, which he said would represent the best qualities in all of us. The spirit of giving, of hope, fun, and above all, love. As we listened, we were inspired too. Now as we enter the second week of Hope Valley Days, with other celebrations still ahead, the festivities continue bringing us closer together. Grateful for where we live and thankful for one another, since there is nothing more uplifting than sharing joy and laughter together. I love the part when they talk about the spirit of giving, of hope, fun, and above all, love. The part when it mentions fun, we see Nathan honking the horn, which I loved. Yes, definitely. That was funny. I, I can't remember the others, but that was a nice little touch. We get a little clip of Mike talking to everyone. And I think he's standing in front of the fire pump that we see in oh, a few yes. scenes. Yes, that was great. Lee getting sprayed with the water hose. That was so funny. I love that touch. That was hilarious. Yeah. Nathan and Jeffrey's conversation in town. Jeffrey is staying. Oh boy. I don't know what to say about that. Just ugh. arrogance is just flowing through. Oh yes. Oh yeah. The fact he says, I'll be approaching the Yost about the job May took under false pretense while using my name. We might even manage the pharmacy together. I wrote, um, no, I don't think so, Jeffrey. I don't think so, buddy. Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. Keep dreaming, buddy. Yeah. Florence and Ned are in the mercantile, and they see Jeffrey trying to get into the pharmacy. And, you know, he's looking through the windows or trying to look through the windows. And they start talking amongst themselves. And yes. Elizabeth... Of course, hears them and she comes up and she's like, may I ask what you two were talking about? And of course they tell her and right. Elizabeth's leaving the mercantile and like giving that look that to was Jeffrey. So awkward. <laughs> I mean, I would feel the same way. I would be like, yeah. oh, what do I do right now? I I like I wouldn't be like, nope, not gonna look at him, not gonna look at him. No, I can't. I'm not doing that. Oh goodness. The scene with Lucas and Elizabeth in the saloon. I appreciate that Lucas didn't tell Elizabeth. I do too. About was... May and Jeffrey. Yeah, I did too. That was really like big of Lucas, you know, to not share that with her. Like, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, good for you, Lucas. Yeah. Like, like, like he, he knows, he knows not to gossip and it yeah. definitely would have been gossiping at that point. So I definitely, I definitely appreciated that. Yeah. Oh, props to Lucas for that. Yeah. And he told Nathan in confidence or he talked to Nathan in confidence about it. Exactly. And the fact that he didn't share that was really big for him and definitely shows his character. Yeah. That kiss. She first gives him a kiss on the cheek. And of course, Lucas thinks that <laughs> she's going to give him an actual kiss. Right. I mean, she's not happy that he didn't share this little bit of information with her. Uh, so, no, she's not going to give him a kiss. Or so he thinks. Yeah. And she says, imagine the kiss you might have gotten had you told me. Well, I hope you will come for dinner tonight and another night of Hanukkah. Jack and I wouldn't miss it. Lucas says, great. Then just out of the blue, Elizabeth says, oh, what the heck? And she just gives him a kiss. <sighs> oh, boy. The fact that Lucas was looking around, making sure no one was watching was hilarious. That was good. That was good. I'm sorry. The kiss was super cheesy. I kind of rolled my eyes a bit. Sorry, guys. But the fact that Lucas was looking around after that, he's a little embarrassed about that. That was funny. That was funny. Nathan and Elizabeth's conversation in town. So Elizabeth is coming out of the saloon and he realizes that she knows about May and Jeffrey and she says that she didn't hear it from Lucas. She found out from someone else first. Nathan doesn't like being the talk of the town 
I love Elizabeth's line. She says, people care about you, Nathan. And it seems as though you care about May, even if only as a friend. Yeah, I definitely feel for Nathan at this point. I think the fact that she said that to him, you know, probably really means a lot to him, whether, you know, he's really able to think about it right now or not. It's just to know that, you know, he's been through a lot recently to just know that, you know, people do have his back, even when it feels like they don't. So yeah. I definitely appreciated that. And the fact that, you know, Elizabeth was like, yeah, no, don't worry. Like Lucas didn't tell me, like I heard from somebody else, just the fact that she didn't even tell, yeah. she didn't yeah. even say who she wasn't, she decided not to gossip in that situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I appreciated that too yeah Nathan and May's conversation at the pharmacy May apprenticed at Jeffrey's pharmacy while she was in school and everything was fine after graduation he offered her a job it wasn't long before Jeffrey wanted more than just friendship when May refused Jeffrey eventually began telling people that he proposed and later that they had eloped and got married shame on Jeffrey I mean, who is this guy? <laughs> who does that? Yeah. Yeah. When Jeffrey learned that she was looking for another job, things got worse. They were never engaged and she never had feelings for him. <sighs> Big sigh of relief right there. Yeah. I'm sure Nathan was very happy to hear that. Cause at this point, yeah. I don't think he really believed that she was married, but I think to just hear that from May that no, I am not. I think that just meant a lot to him. Yeah, I agree. As soon as May discovered Jeffrey filed a forged document, that's when she left and headed to Hope Valley. May isn't sure how Jeffrey found her. And then I wrote possibly Faith because mm -hmm. Faith was the one that wrote Jeffrey. Right. When she first got there. I mean, I'm not placing blame on Faith, of course, but. No, I mean, it wasn't intentional. It's not no. intentional. It's just she was, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. May says, you believe me, don't you? Nathan says, yes. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter whether or not I believe you. We need proof against Jeffrey. I like the looks they gave each other in that yeah. moment. She was like, you believe me, don't you? He's like, I do. And like, you yeah. could just tell she just felt, you know, a weight was lifted off her shoulders yeah. when she saw that Nathan believed her. But then unfortunately, you know, Nathan's like, well, yeah, I do believe you, but you know, that's, that's not going to help. Enough, unfortunately. Yeah. But at least, at least, you know, in that moment, I think, I think their friend, their friendship grew a lot in that moment yeah. to just see that trust that they had between yeah. each other. I think, you know, that, that goes a long way. I loved the scene with Elizabeth at the school with her students and she's talking more about Thanksgiving. Angela says, to me, it means giving out of thanks and not just giving thanks. Elizabeth says, another way of celebrating Thanksgiving is by thankful giving how then might we be able to celebrate that year round? I wrote right. reminder of kindness week from season three. Yes, very true. I love that. Such a callback. Yes, it's a great callback and also great advice. And it's great. Yeah. It's important, something important to keep in mind that, you know, the importance of not just, you know, giving, giving thanks yeah. that way, but really Thanksgiving, giving thanks out to people yeah. for what they've done for us. So. Mike and Lee have a conversation in town. Lee is looking at the fire pump that Mike bought with the town's discretionary fund. I think it's going to come in very handy coming and, up. Yeah. Pretty soon. Also, Mike says, you've taken issue with everything I've done as mayor. Then you put it in the paper for all to see. Lee says, Michael, just give me a minute. I, and then... Mike says, maybe later, Romeo. <sighs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. That hurts just a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. Ouch. <laughs> I feel bad for Mike and I feel bad for Lee. I know. I mean, it's not intentional. I no. mean, they really are good friends, but you know, Lee is a little bit hurt. And now because yeah. Lee is hurt, Mike is also hurt, which is yeah. unfortunate. Can we just talk about the scene with Lee and Rosemary in their office? And Rosemary quoting Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet. That was hilarious. So good. And can I just say, Pascal looked absolutely stunning. She did. In that outfit and her hair. It fit her so well. I yeah. was like, yes. This, yeah. Yes. I love how Rosemary gives Lee a typewriter. That was really sweet. That was sweet, except for the fact that Lee didn't want to use it. Want to use it. 
Lucas has a conversation in town with some visitors of Hope Valley, and the two women are school teachers, which I thought was nice, or at least one of them is a school teacher. I think the one was, and the other one was just friends with her. Yeah. Children, you know, were both involved in the the school thing together, so. Yeah, I thought that was a sweet moment just to see, you know, Lucas being very open with those kids, and, you know, Mm -hmm. he kind of had a moment he bonded with them a little bit because he said, understood you know what they were going so I thought that was a sweet moment to just see you know Lucas opening up to the newcomers yeah and to see how later on he's able to you know relay information he heard you know to Elizabeth so I thought that was a sweet moment to see you know how he was able to help them ultimately through Elizabeth yeah I just got to mention Nathan and Jeffrey in the Mountie office when he's on the phone and Jeffrey comes in and he says, I hope I'm not interrupting. And Nathan says, oh, you're way past interrupting. Way, way, way past interrupting. Oh, boy. Jeffrey threatens to take action against Nathan. First Bill, now Nathan. <laughs> yeah, make a few phone calls to have him disciplined if he doesn't do as he asks and arrest May. Lovely. Just lovely. Jeffrey is just a lovely person. Not at all. (laughs) Totally being sarcastic. Yeah, totally. Joseph, Minnie, and Bill at Abigail's Cafe. They are celebrating becoming partners, which we already knew from the last episode. Joseph wants to make a few changes at the cafe. And something is going on with Bill because he goes outside and, you know, he's coughing and he coughs up blood. I saw that coming. I was like, he's going to cough off some blood, isn't he? And sure enough, he did. I know that back then, and even now, that could be a sign of tuberculosis. Although I hope that's not what's going on with him. Because in that time, a lot of people died from that. Yeah. Well, we know that Bill is not going to go anywhere. He's going to get it resolved. Yeah. But- the time being yes it is very concerning it could be because of the cracked rib maybe possible so lucas goes to the school to inform elizabeth about the two women that are waiting in the saloon to speak to her and of course elizabeth doesn't want to leave her class but lucas offers to stand in for her i loved this scene i know it was teased we got to see it before the episode yeah Personally, I love this scene. I love to see Lucas just, you know, getting involved with the kids and, you know, yeah. having, and being actually a really good teacher. Like, I think all the kids said it, you know, later when Elizabeth comes back and they're like, oh, like, Lucas is so much fun. Like, we love Mr. Bouchard. And I was like, yeah, I'd want him as my teacher as well. I, I would. Him, like, that ball around and, you know, having them talk about predicates and stuff like that and how, you, you, you know, like he got really excited. And, um, and how like how like Angela raised her hand and like she she gave her yeah. answer. And- Lucas says, "I'm afraid I got too excited." Yes, that was a sweet scene. I yeah. loved it. I would love if I were still in school. I would love to have Lucas as a teacher. I just have to say. Oh yes! Oh yes! Chris McNally as Lucas is really stepping it up this season. I mean, he has done a phenomenal job. I have to say, I I never thought. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I never actually thought I would like Lucas. Season six and seven, I could not stand his character. I wanted to like him, but I just couldn't like him. I love him now. And I love Lucas in season nine. No, season nine, Lucas is like, yes, give, give, give me more of this. Still not a huge fan of him and Elizabeth together, but Lucas, I love him. And uh, and him with little Jack is just adorable. So yeah, Lucas and kids, yes, give me more. Yeah. So we're jumping back a little bit. Faith goes into the pharmacy because she has to get something from May for a bill. And she sees Nathan is there. He is taking May into custody. Oh boy. I love Faith's I love reaction. reaction. I know. Faith's reaction there. I love like I mean, it was so raw. I feel Way like to go. And how could you? Way to go, Andrea. She really knocked that oh, yeah. scene out of the park. Definitely. Definitely. Just briefly, we see Elizabeth talking to the women in the saloon. And 
She basically offers to help share some of the tricks she's learned and getting the materials that they need. Yeah, that, that was a nice thing to see Elizabeth yeah. being able to help them. For yeah, sure. teachers supporting teachers. Yes. Bill is in the infirmary with Molly and she found a bruise that wasn't there the last time he was there. And Bill says that he may have a cracked rib from the disagreement with Jeffrey. Oh boy. Yeah. So if that's the case, that was, uh, that was a serious showdown. Uh huh. It's really brief, but we get a scene with Faith talking to May at the jail. Faith apologizes to May and May says, no, there's no need to apologize. She goes on to say, of all people, I should have told you what was happening. I just didn't want to get you involved, which was really sweet of her. Right. Yeah. I mean, she's like I said before, she's acknowledging her mistakes. And I think that definitely shows her character and how, you know, she wants to do the right thing. And sometimes, you know, in trying to do the right thing, sometimes you you do the wrong thing, but you're trying to ultimately, you know, protect whoever's involved. So, um, yeah, I appreciated that conversation. And I especially appreciate the conversation that Nathan may have once Faith leaves. Yeah, I love that conversation. I was about to bring that up. May says, I knew it. Nathan says, you knew what? The first time I came to see you, I said, jail seemed depressing. Well, you're better off here. And then Nathan goes on to ask how she put up with Jeffrey. She says that at one time she thought she felt sorry for him. He always wanted to be a doctor like his father. But when it became clear that wouldn't happen, he grew bitter. Nathan says, that's no excuse for what he's done. No, all I'm saying is there was a time when he was very different. How is it that we think we know someone only to find out we don't? For me, it begins with understanding who I am and being honest with myself and others. Nathan is writing a telegram to Chicago with more information on Jeffrey. I love this scene. I think there's a lot of depth yeah. to it. I yeah, think I think there's so much good stuff in this little scene and I think Amanda Wong and Kevin McGarry played it so well I have to say this is the first time I think I really saw some real chemistry and some real possibility between Nathan and May not saying that I know where it's gonna go at this point but the looks Mm -hmm. each other in this scene I was like okay I see you I see you especially the look that Nathan Nathan's just like looking in awe at May when May told him about you know all that stuff about like being herself and like how she could put up with Jeff and I think I think Nathan just really grew to really appreciate May in that situation to see her strength and also I think he learned something about himself too because even with that question that he asked you know about like how do you like you think you know somebody and then you realize that you don't it's like I think you know he's talking about multiple people in that situation I think you know what he went through with his father I think is really big and I think it kind of brings him back to that and also I think even what happened with Elizabeth as well I think he's just realizing you know there are these people in his life who he thought he knew and then he realized that you know there's all this stuff that happened with them and he realizes they weren't who he thought they were yeah and so I think like that's like a really big scene both for May and for Nathan because I think they were both able to realize some stuff about each other and I think they that's really where their bond really grew I feel and I definitely felt it there I don't know where it's gonna go and we'll talk about this later on too but I, I, I like what I saw in that scene between the two of them. I really do. I didn't yeah. think I would, but I, I, I love yeah, it. just for a second, we need to mention Joseph and Minnie at the cafe and Joseph bringing out Mr. Fuzzy. He was like in the box. That was funny. D- did you know what was in that box? I, I thought it was a mouse before he said. At first I thought it was a bird. Really? Interesting. Yeah. But then I could see it being something like a mouse or. Yeah. Yeah. My first inclination was a mouse, but then he's like, Mr. Fuzzy was like, okay, maybe not. And then like a squirrel. Yeah. That was funny. (laughs) And he's saying, many saying, Joseph, take Mr. Fuzzy out of my kitchen. Yeah. (laughs) He's not welcome here. 
Uh, uh -uh. Squirrels are not welcome at Abigail's cafe, or at least inside. Right, exactly. Just another kind of comical scene we have to briefly mention. Nathan, Faith, and Bill in the infirmary. Bill says, doesn't anyone knock around here? Faith, well, I shouldn't be surprised you're encouraging Bill to leave. I didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah, no, Bill, that was Bill. That was Bill. That was all. Oh. Sure, Nathan's not going to stop him, but Nathan knows better. <laughs> yeah. And then Nathan saying he'll look out for Bill. Right. And I love Faith's comment too, too, about Mountain Mountie's being very mulish. Yes. Really funny. Yeah. Everyone in the saloon, Ned is talking about good deeds, hope, and miracles. I love the quote from this scene. Miracles do happen, sometimes on their own, but sometimes we need to help make them happen. Gustav is playing the accordion again. And the little moment between little Jack and Lucas, of course, was adorable with the dreidel. Oh. It's spinning. Highland is adorable. Yeah. And of course, hey, buddy. <laughs> Gotta love that. The friends conversation with Lee and Mike, ouch. Are we friends? I mean, aren't we? In that moment, I think Lee realized the way he's been acting. I think he realized, you know, how much it actually hurts Hickam. Yeah. The way, that, you know, all the things that he's been writing about him. I mean, obviously that wasn't Lee's intention. He's just, you know, Lee's heard about not getting elected and he, you know, he's feeling a little discouraged about what the decisions yeah. that Mike is making. And I don't think he realized fully just how much that impacts Mike in their friendship. And so I think in that moment was definitely, I think a light bulb turned on for Lee when Hickam was like, like kind of questioning yeah. whether or not they were friends. So yeah. yeah, definitely a big ouch moment for sure. Yeah. Nathan and Lucas outside the pharmacy. Nathan is watching out for Jeffrey. Lucas hasn't seen him. He knocked on his door, but he wasn't there. I love how Nathan mentions to Lucas how much he appreciates what was said about May. Yeah, I did too. I thought that was really sweet. I love that, you know, Nathan was, you know, in that moment, he was thanking Lucas for, you know, the help yeah. that he had. Like he he definitely acknowledged the fact mm -hmm. that Lucas helped him. And I, I really appreciated that. Like I thought yeah. that was a very genuine mm -hmm. So I love that. Elizabeth walks up and she left Jack with Allie. The last part of this conversation, Nathan says, she asked when I might get married. Oh boy. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm sure she just wants you to be happy, Nathan. Well, what she wants is a little brother or sister. Well, you never know. No, you never know. But what I do know is that love is the greatest gift since it can't be forced only free to give well we won't talk about Allie's conversation what Allie just said but I thought that quote was really sweet I definitely wasn't expecting that yeah well, of course, I kind of hoped it was Nathan who just came up with that but then I realized that he it was, was the quote reading a quote that May had put up on the window yeah. which I also thought was kind yeah. of neat little tidbit there too but I thought that overall I thought that was a kind of a sweet moment but also a humorous moment and Nathan kind of gave them the look like <laughs> yeah one of the funniest scenes in the episode Bill and May in the jail and Bill is intoxicated on cough syrup oh my gosh that was so funny <laughs> talking about Nora he's like my ex-wife and here we go Finally, after how many seasons we hear about Nora again? One of the funniest lines. Nathan walks in and he's like, what are you doing here? And Bill said, I had a little cough syrup and I thought I should lay down for a bit. May. Bill's been very talkative. That's because you're so easy to talk to. Okay, why don't we lie back down? Jack Wagner killed this scene. <laughs> so funny i feel bad for bill i mean trust me it's really not humorous oh my gosh but it no. was so funny it's not funny that he's sick but the way he the way he acted Perfect. in that scene was so good brilliant like you could really believe that he was intoxicated on calls oh yeah <laughs> bill what were you doing but that also makes me think Faith, what were you doing telling him that he could take it as needed? No, no. 
and Nathan taking the bottle from Bill and looking at it and like shaking. It was like, I hope I didn't drink that whole thing. <laughs> so funny. Nathan takes a phone call from Chief Inspector Hargraves, who we saw last season. Oh boy. And I have less than fond memories uh, of that inspector. Yeah. And it doesn't surprise me that it's him calling, trying to have me arrested and Nathan and Bill disciplined. Of course. He has no problem with disciplining Nathan. Yeah. No problem at all. Hargraves had received a call from the newly reelected mayor of Chicago, William H. Thompson. They goes on to tell Nathan and, of course, Bill, too, that the Lewis family is very powerful and well-connected. Oh, boy. They've been ordered to arrange May's transport to Chicago, or Nathan and Bill will face the consequences of their actions. Oh, boy. This is not looking good. No. For anyone involved. Mm -mm. Elizabeth and the Canfields in the cafe with Anna. I love this scene. This was a great moment. Anna is mm-hmm. staying in Hope Valley and she's going to work at the cafe and rent out a room upstairs. Yeah. No, it was definitely a sweet moment. Although I, I find it really hard to believe that Anna's old enough. I you know. know to come on her own. I was like, I feel like it was just yesterday. You know, she was just this little girl and, and sitting in the pews at the school, you know, listening to Elizabeth, you know, giving her lessons. And now she's all grown up yeah. and going to be living on her own and working it's, it's yeah. crazy where's yeah. the time going i know lee and rosemary in their office i love the headline for the editorial hope valley hope that's sweet yeah of course rosemary is quoting shakespeare again and of course she compliments lee on his editorial about mike and also compliments mike she says he has turned out to be the unqualified best choice the right mayor for the right time. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I think especially the right mayor for the right time because yeah. I think so, you know, sometimes you know people can surprise you. You never know like if you just give them a chance. Yeah. Sometimes they like like she said, you know, he was the unqualified one, but sometimes you know when it looks like somebody might not be able to do something, they can really surprise you if you give them the chance. And yeah. Often they end up being just what you need. So yeah. I really appreciate that yeah. really nice quote from Rosemary. And Lee wants to stay right where he is at the paper with Rosemary. He does not want to run for office again. Right. I would hope not. <laughs> yeah. Just real quick before we jump ahead to the big scene with Nathan and May and Jeffrey at the jail. Bill is coming out of the infirmary and he seems to be doing a little bit better. And Mike asks Faith to accompany him to the church service, which I thought was really sweet. It was sweet. I'm loving all these little Faith and Mike friendship relationship teases. I'm there for it. I love it. Yeah. Mike asks Bill if he'll be at the church service and he says that he won't because he needs to get some rest, doctor's orders. Mike says, I'm sorry you didn't get to surprise us with at least one April Fool's joke. You never know. I may have fooled you all. At first when he said that, I was really confused. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, I thought he was talking about how like he was leaving and how like, I honestly thought he he meant that he wasn't actually feeling okay. Like he wasn't good enough to leave. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Then later, it all makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. The big scene with Nathan and May and Jeffrey. Yes. And Nathan is releasing May, but not to go with Mr. Fancy Pants. Mm-mm. Jeffrey Lewis. Word came back from Chicago that the marriage license for them is fraudulent. I knew it. I called it. I, I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't real. <laughs> yeah. I figured May was not married. I was not expecting Jeffrey to be married, though. No, no, that just that just makes him even more yeah <sighs> unlikable. When I was sitting down watching this episode, and they have the conversation, I was like, "Uh huh." I was like, "Way to nail him, Nathan. Way yeah. to nail Jeffrey." There you go. <laughs> You're not getting out of this one, buddy. Nope. 
Jeffrey was the one that abandoned his spouse, his mm-hmm. wife in Evanston. Right. And that and that's also where he got his wedding ring from because that's not one he got for May. Mm-mm. Or even bought for May. It's gotta be from his, nope. wife, his yeah. real wife. May says, Jeffrey, just go. Please go. Jeffrey says, May, please. All I've ever wanted to be was with you. I can't help you. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. I don't love you. Then Nathan says, so I suppose you're staying now in the hug. So sweet. Okay, can I just say, what is up with Nathan and all these hugs, these tackle hugs? (laughs) I mean, I don't blame the woman. He is very huggable. But I was like, I love that moment. I was not expecting it. And honestly, I know some Hardys, especially Team Nathan, are a little triggered by it because it reminds them of a certain other hug yeah but that aside I loved it I I just loved how genuinely thankful Mm -hmm. he was yeah Nathan in that situation she just showed so much care and love just as like a friend yeah that she just wanted to give all of her gratitude to Nathan in that moment because he just like he was her hero yeah he He was least her you know from you know this horrible man who was you know very stalkerish yeah and she just you know showed all of her gratitude to Nathan in that moment and I think it's about time that somebody gives Nathan a hug not because they're worried they're gonna lose him not because of any other reason but because they're so thankful for him and because he deserves it and that person genuinely cares about him I gotta give it to May for that that was yeah beautiful scene I absolutely loved it and I just loved how incredibly happy Nathan looked in that yeah moment. I did too it's a beautiful scene I loved it yeah the church service I loved Joseph's sermon I have a little bit of it written down you know he thanks Mike and he's finishing his sermon he says as we roll into the actual holidays I want to encourage us all to try holding fast to the spirit of last week the spirit of giving, of hope, of fun, and most important, love. When he said fun, it showed Mike and Faith. (laughs) That was funny. Yeah. When it said giving, I believe it showed Lee and Rosemary, which was sweet. Mm -hmm. And then it showed Florence and Ned for hope, and then love for Lucas, Elizabeth, and Little Jack. Then the rest of his sermon states, Remember, we were made in the image of God and meant to display his character. The way we treat one another calls attention to that. Don't look to see yourself in one another. Instead, look to see someone God uniquely created to be himself. That might be one of my favorite, if not favorite quotes of the season. I think that's just such a beautiful reminder. Yeah. Just, you know just the importance of that and just realizing you know the importance of who god made us to be and that we don't have to be anybody else and to you know be the best version of ourselves because you know you never know like people are going to look at us and they're gonna we want them to see you know that character of god in us yeah i thought that was just such a beautiful reminder and i love also how they showed when they were talking about that how you know may is sitting next to ali and she nudged her and they just gave her that look like yes what we're talking about like to be yourself and like yeah the importance of that and I loved how like that brought what they were saying back to God yeah and so I thought that, that was beautiful beautiful dialogue there I I love that I totally agree yeah I would venture to say that that might just be one of the best lines in the entire series I agree hands down definitely in the way Viv Leacock yeah delivered yes that beautiful sermon was just yeah oh, so good yeah I have to mention Jack's comment after Joseph says for everyone to head to the saloon he's like let's eat <laughs> so cute the walk after to the saloon when Lucas is carrying little Jack and Jack says am I too heavy buddy and Lucas says no you're just fine and then a few seconds later he's like maybe you are getting a little heavy yeah that was precious though when he said that 
Am I yeah. too sweet, buddy? So sweet. Yeah. The Christmas tree. I was not expecting that. No. I will say, though, when they first started the Hope Valley days and they mentioned all the different um, holidays, I was like, what about Christmas? I was like, we can't forget about that. Come on. Yeah. All right. They had, they they had something up their sleeve. They did. They did. The writers yeah. had an April Fool's, too. Yeah. <laughs> Although I wouldn't say that that's really an April Fool's. That's more like a surprise. Surprise, but you know, April Fool's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fine, we'll play yeah. along. We'll play along. Yeah, I love how everyone is trying to figure out who set it up. And then we see Bill in his office and he's like, April Fool's. That was cute. And then everyone starts singing, Oh, come all you faithful, which I loved. I love that. I was not expecting that either. It was no. so nice to yeah. see another yeah. scene of, you know, all the town you know singing yeah together and that is one of my favorite christmas songs Mm -hmm. mine too the thanksgiving dinner and lee and rosemary taking photographs of everyone that photo montage was so great yes the the first one of florence and ned with the mistletoe that was hilarious that was so funny i was like yes you go girl you get it (laughs) you get that kiss from yo Flo-yo, yes. Hashtag team Flo-yo. Oh, yes. All the way. We see Mike go up to Lee and thank him yeah. for the editorial and how he appreciated every word. Lee said that he meant every word. That's and nice. then we get the montage as a voiceover of Elizabeth is playing. Right. Before I get into the dialogue, we have photos of Allie, Opal, Emily, Robert, Timmy, and Anna. A photo of Florence and Molly one of Allie and Nathan, and then another one of them with May. Of course, Allie just had to bring May into it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so glad they got one together before they brought May in, though. Yeah. Lucas and Gustav, Faith and May, Mike, the Canfields, another one of Ned and Florence, Lee and Rosemary, some photos of just little Jack, and then Lucas and Elizabeth with little Jack. The just little Jack ones was so funny. I loved how they, how Lee and Rosemary had the stuffed animals. And yes. Just ridiculous yes. Trying to get him to smile. That was so cute. I was so about funny. to say that Lee with the horse. That was so funny. I loved it. That was great. Yeah. The dialogue from Elizabeth says, Lee did mean every word he wrote and not just about Mike. Lee wrote about all of us. With so much mistrust these days, it's easy to become bitter and cold, all before winter actually arrives. But along with the other holidays being celebrated during Hope Valley days, it seems that Christmas has arrived early, and Santa Claus is none other than Mayor Hickam. And what a happier world this might be with more like the mayor. People who set aside the tangible things in life for those that are surely of greater value. Those things that make us smile and laugh and shout with excitement that fill us with joy and wonder, giving us comfort and peace. They're just reassurance that we're not alone. I clipped Lee's piece and saved it to read from time to time to help me recall that special week we joined hands and celebrated one another together. Mm, That's a nice way to end the episode. That was some very sweet words there. Yeah. And I gotta love the journal entries. Yeah. Yeah. That preview for next week. Let's just talk about that for a second before we wrap up oh boy (laughs) yikes Wyman Walden and Spurlock are are back back. great (laughs) just joy to the world oh yeah it's a lovely day in Hope Valley oh yeah definitely (laughs) not Wyman wants to buy the Queen of Hearts saloon the voiceover we hear in the preview it says to catch a crook you need to set a trap. And it sounds like that trap is going to be that Lucas is going to tell Walden that he can buy the saloon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Lucas asked Bill what they should do. Yeah. He suggests letting Wyman buy the Queen of Hearts. We see a clip of Bill and Mike in Bill's office. Mike says, you think this will work? Bill says, it's got to work. We see a clip of Elizabeth where she says there's just so much at stake here. There's a clip of Lee. He says it's kind of like a mystery novel. I'm interested to see what he means by that. Yeah, that'll be interesting. We get a clip of Nathan walking in the saloon. And of course, 
who is there spurlock Spurlock. oh joy joy to the world again and then lucas and elizabeth at her home and she says you were followed and it is elizabeth's birthday it is for the first time on the show we see that that's true lots of holidays being celebrated yeah yeah I gotta say though I love whoever edited this preview did a great job because they made it very mysterious Uh especially when I think was it Lucas who blows out the candle at the end yeah yeah Yeah, Lucas blows out the candle yeah I love the editing that was clever yeah before we completely end the episode I just have to share the theory Mm -hmm. with all of the hardies Hannah I know I shared it with you last night yes but we know that there is a fire in an upcoming episode of the season and if I'm correct it's at the saloon yeah from what I've heard that's what we all think yeah and we know that Wyman wants to buy the queen of hearts what if Wyman and or Spurlock are involved with starting the fire I mean we know that arson runs in the Spurlock family Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely I could definitely see that being the case, especially if, you know, they do this little scheme where they, they trap Walden into thinking he's going to buy the saloon. But then he's not. And then he's not. Maybe this is revenge. Yeah. You never know. We'll find it's out. It's about to get really interesting in Hope Valley. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. Here we go. All right, Hardies, I think that wraps up our recap of Season 9, Episode 7 and 8, Hope Valley Days, Part 1 and 2. We will be back next week for our recap of Season 9, Episode 9, Recent Memory. And please stay tuned for a very special interview also coming next week. We cannot wait to share it with you, Hardies. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed And we will see you next time. We love y'all. Bye. Bye, hearties.